AI. Poetic Films. A poem written by Michael Kling. All rights reserved. The prince and his, excess, princess. The prince and his princess were never ones to talk about. A perfect pair, a tale known all too well. Supper at nine, bread and wine, followed by kisses no doubt. Shoes worn thin by time and dances, a lover swell. The prince and his princess were never late to parties. Laughing and shoving their way into the place. Flaunting their fame and fortune, never at charities. Calling out loud funny gestures, quality of face. The prince and his princess were never quite the dreamer's dream. They seemed too restless, too young, without a clue. Though perfect and stringless they might have seemed. They were undoubtedly non-proficient, too good to be true. In the heart of the grandest castle on earth lived the prince and his princess, the wealthiest royalty of the 1500s. A castle resplendent with grandeur nestled in the lush greens of a kingdom known far and wide. The castle, a testament to their wealth, was a spectacle to behold, brimming with the finest riches the world had to offer. The prince, a man of great charm and charisma, was admired by all. His gallantry was legendary, his wisdom unparalleled. He was a man of taste, a connoisseur of the finer things in life. He had a pension for extravagant feasts, sumptuous threads and the most exquisite wines. His days were filled with royal duties, his nights with lavish parties. Then there was the princess, a vision of beauty and elegance. She was radiant, her laughter infectious. Her eyes sparkled brighter than the jewels that adorned her. Her gown spun from the finest silks trailed behind her like a river of colors. She was a lover of art, music and poetry. She had a heart as big as the castle they resided in. Her love for the prince, boundless. Together, they were the epitome of opulence and extravagance. Their life was a never-ending ball, a whirlwind of luxuries and riches. Every evening was an occasion, every meal a feast. Their love story was the talk of the kingdom, a tale spun with threads of gold and silver. A tale of a prince and his princess, their love as grand as the castle they called home. Yet they were not just a wealthy couple confined within their castle walls, they were a symbol of love, a beacon of hope. Their bond was a testament to the power of love, their story an inspiration to all. The prince and his princess, a perfect pair, their love story known all too well, a tale woven with threads of gold and silver. The prince and his princess were the life of every party. The younger woman's voice takes over, her tone whimsical. Imagine the grandeur of their lavish soirees, lively music echoing through their opulent castle, the royals waltzing under shimmering chandeliers. The prince and princess, always the center of attention, were known for their flamboyant gestures. They would laugh and shove their way into the place, their boisterous mirth infectious. In their extravagant attire, they'd flaunt their fame and fortune, a sight to behold. Their merriment, however, was not shared by all. For while they reveled in their opulence, charities were overlooked, their wealth not extending to those less fortunate. Yet this did not dampen the allure of the royal pair. Their parties were the most sought after, their guests captivated by the spectacle. For the prince and his princess were the stars of every party, their fame and fortune outshining everyone else. Yet the prince and his princess were not what the dreamers dreamed. The older voice begins, a hint of irony lacing his tone. The image of the royal couple, so often lavished with praise and admiration, begins to morph and change under scrutiny. They were restless, the younger voice interjects, her tone reflecting the couple's constant need for movement, for excitement. The image of the prince and princess, always in motion, never content, begins to form. Too young, the older voice continues, the age and wisdom in his tone contrasting with the couple's naive exuberance. The couple, so full of life and energy, yet so lacking in wisdom and understanding, is now in view. Without a clue, the younger voice adds, her tone softer now, almost sympathetic. The couple, so unaware of the world beyond their castle walls, so unprepared for the realities of life, becomes clearer. They were too good to be true, their perfection a mere illusion, they conclude together, their voices merging into one. The irony of the situation finally revealed. The dreamer's dream, it seems, was nothing more than a dream. Happily never after, however, held a clandestine truth. 
a secret so profound it would shatter the gilded image they had so meticulously crafted. Beneath the lavish feasts, the grand balls and the unending merriment lurked a truth as stark as the winter chill. Despite all the dazzling splendor and opulent banquets, the couple, adored by all, were drowning in a sea of debt. A sea so vast it dwarfed their lavish castle to a mere pebble. My dear friends, the irony of it all is as rich as the gold they pretended to own. Danced in shoes worn thin, not by the rhythm of their joy, but by the weight of their pretense. Though the heroes of our tale, the epitome of wealth and extravagance, were, in truth, destitute. And so, the wealthiest royalty of the 1500s were, in reality, the poorest. Their opulence a mere facade, their wealth an illusion. A.I. Poetic Films